All right, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Necroscope by Brian Lumley. This book came out in 1986. It was hugely popular. Hugely popular in the bookstores back when it came out. And it spawned a series of vampire novels that I think there's maybe 14 or 15. I've only got the first five. The first five Necroscope books were kind of the original series. That's all I've read. I have not read any of the others. But we're going to be rereading these five and reviewing them for my channel. We always start with the covers. This cover is badass. Look at that. I mean, doesn't that just say, doesn't that just scream 1980s horror novel? This painting was done of this super, super skull. I love this. I love the covers of all of these. In fact, they were all done by an artist named Bob Eggleton, who was very, very, he did a lot of illustrations in the 80s and 90s for fantasy and science fiction. He did all of these original, I think he did all of the Necroscope series, not just the original five, but I think he did every single book. But these things are seriously just dope paintings. And Bob Eggleton went on to win the Hugo Award for Best Science Fiction and Fantasy Artist of the Year many years in a row. So the guy's an accomplished artist. And the fact is, I met Bob Eggleton back when I was a college art student. He was the one that awarded me with the Illustrator of the Future Award at the big banquet there they had in Hollywood for uh, the Writers of the Future and the Illustrators of the Future contest. It was Bob Eggleton that gave me my award when I back when I did illustrations back in college. So I always remember him from that. Bob Eggleton's one of the great artists of the genre, one of the great dudes of the genre. And, and you can tell by these paintings are just dope. Everything's dope. This... Not only that, not only, I, I, while we're name dropping, I've also met Brian Lumley at the World Fantasy Convention in Tempe, Arizona in 2004. And yeah, he signed a couple of the books that I got. I always, I always show off my signed books. Hey, I'll name drop like a fucker. What's it about? Necroscope. It's the best vampire series, really, that there is. Just as, as I'm just going to tell you right there. This is set in 19... It's written in 1986. It starts out in 1971 in the heart of the Cold War between the United States and Russia. Just think of uh, your most favorite Tom Clancy book if it had vampires in it. And that's what we've got here. These are very Robert Ludlum born, the born, you know, identity type Thriller novels just incorporating vampires. It's got a lot of Cold War spycraft and espionage in it. And a lot of vampires. What's happening is, in Russia in 1971, there's this dude named Dragonasi. He's our main antagonist. He's the bad guy of the series. Dragonasi is this necromancer in training. And he, um, he can speak to the dead, but the way he speaks to the dead is he... He, as he kills them, he, he roots around in their guts as they're dying, and, 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 and then as they're dead, and then, that, then he can get their essence, he can speak to them, he can speak to them, he can, he can get their memories, and, and that, and people live on, there is life after death in this, in this series, there's life after death is a big theme, and people do live after they're dead, and they, and they, and, and they kind of want to speak whether it's to a necromancer or to a necroscope, and we're going to get into that a little bit. But Dragonassi can talk to the dead and by rooting around in their guts. And the KGB uses him to find out secrets, because a lot of times people won't spill their secrets when they're alive, so they've got to kill them and let the necromancer speak to them when they're dead. And so he's a big, huge... I mean, he's important to the KGB because he's got this gift. And he ends up, you know, helping his boss um, 
Borowitz, who's the main KGB guy, he's kind of Borowitz's little underling, and he helps Borowitz figure out who all the traitors are. By, you know, they just kill him, and then they root around in their guts, and he speaks to them, and, and then their secrets, <clears throat> you know, forget the torture. Well, they'll torture him anyway. They'll still torture him to see if they'll spill their guts while they're alive. But they, they, the ones that don't spill their guts, they, they do this necromancy thing with uh, Dragonassi is the main, and then they're breeding. At the same time, the Russians are breeding this army of vampires. And it's got a lot to do with um, Vlad the Impaler and Romania, and it's all set in these parts of the world. you know. But meanwhile, we've got our antagonist, a fellow named Harry Keogh. I don't know how you pronounce it. It's spelled K-E-O-G-H. K-E-O-G-H. Keogh. Harry Keogh is our main protagonist, and we get to see him. It's kind of a coming-of-age tale for him because we meet him when he's really young, and he's in this school. Um, it's kind of like, he's kind of like the goodwill hunting of his school. He's very genius with mathematics. Not only that, but he's also got this skill of speaking to the dead, but it's called um, necroscope. He doesn't have to root through their guts to talk to them. He can, he can actually speak to them when they're dead, already dead, killed by other means. And um, they want to talk to him. A necroscope, I mean, they actually, peep, the dead actually want to hang out and talk to this guy because nobody can really talk to them except for necroscopes. And there aren't that many, and he is one. And so the, he's always being bombarded with the dead wanting to speak to him. And so now we've got this interplay between this Cold War spycraft thriller novel about the KGB and America trying to figure out, you know, Keogh is sent to investigate the KGB and their breeding of the vampires. And that's part of, a lot of people don't, back in the day when the, because I this came out during the Cold War, so when Russia and America were bitter enemies, and so this was a huge deal. Nowadays people reread it and they're like, ah, oh, it's so dated. It's all about... The Cold War 30 years ago, I mean, that's so known, that's so like yesterday, right? That's why I like it, you know? I mean, I grew up, I was a teenager, junior high, I was a kid, elementary school, junior high, I was a teenager during all that stuff. It still, I mean, resonates with me, all of the fears we had about Russia. And by God, if they would have told us they were breeding vampires back then, I would have been like, yeah, that sounds about right. I can see the Russian, I can see old Gorbachev. Breeding of the empire, yeah, I mean, plausible, with all the stuff they used to tell us about communism and all that. Yeah, 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 I mean, I love it, and I still love it, I still dig anything set back in that area. Because in 1986 is when it was written, and it's and most of the story takes place in the 70s, and I'm like, man, I, I remember those times, man, I remember. I might have been a little kid, but man, I, that stuff has an indelible imprint on my mind. And so... To not only get a great espionage thriller like Tom Clancy or Robert Ludlum or John Le Carré, not only that, but we get some badass vampires. I mean, these dude, these vampires, they don't sparkle, they don't twinkle. They are the most badass written vampires ever. And that's why these are great. That's why I got them. That's why I'm rereading them. So what do I give Necroscope? Book one. And then five Necroscope books that I own. Maybe some day down the road I'll get the other ten or some that are in the series. But for now it's these five were the were the main five, the main popular five. So I give this about a 9.5 out of 10. The writing is very good. Um, the characters are good and the story just is relentlessly good. And I love our main character, Harry Keogh. It's like having Goodwill Hunting on your team. I mean, this guy's just a brilliant guy. And so anyway, Necroscope, everybody.